Have you guys ever wondered how to identify a rejection wick or a wick that is going to be filled in the market? That is exactly what this video is going to be about today. And I'm going to cover the three main points in order for you guys to start smashing and understanding what wicks are going to be filled and what wicks are most likely to be rejection wicks that you guys don't get caught out in those fake outs and end up losing your trades so be sure to stick around to the end of the video so that you can listen to all of the three points to make sure that you guys get this down i think it's a very underutilized topic in the markets that not a lot of people speak about but it's very very important and helps you a lot during your trading and in the long run so with that being said let's get straight into the video All right, guys so before we get started the first thing i'm going to do is explain to you the difference between a rejection wick and what is a wick fill so what do we expect to happen in a wick fill and what is a rejection wick but before we get into that appreciate you guys if you do the youtube business which is leaving a like if you do enjoy the video and if you do enjoy my content on my channel there's a lot of content please do consider subscribing and uh, make sure for all of the subscribers out there, I've actually had some complaints saying that people are not getting to see my videos and that really makes me upset and I do want people to see my videos. And the reason is that YouTube is not giving you the notification if you don't turn on that bell. I'm not a YouTuber who spams with all of these different content. No, I post valuable content and make sure that bell is on so you know when I do post it and you can watch those videos, right? So I advise you to watch to the end of this video and really use all of these three steps. I'm gonna try and make it short and concise as possible to really help you guys. But first thing here is uh, let me explain basically what is a wick fill versus a rejection wick. And uh, yeah, first of all, on the chart, we can look at simple wick fills versus rejection wick. So for example, this is a rejection wick. These are all rejection wicks here, rejection wick, rejection wick. And that's not really what we want to get caught up on. And uh, let me know, guys, for the guys who've been watching, if you guys enjoy the charts being white here, if you think it looks better, uh, let me know and I'll continue doing it or you prefer the chart to be dark. So a wick fill is when we see a wick get filled here. This is a wick fill, wick fill here, wick fill here, and wick fill here. So how are we going to identify between a rejection wick, which one's going to reject, and which one is going to be a wick fill? And this is really going to help with your trading because it's not only going to allow you to be able to take trades and catch wick fills, it's going to make you avoid getting caught in rejection wicks. And the more you can avoid being caught in the rejection wicks, the less likely you are going to lose the trades and end up in an unprofitable position. So very, very important. And with that being said, let's get straight into step number one. Step number one, in order to avoid a rejection wick and mostly find wick fills is actually going to be as simple as following the trend and following the bias for your session. So based on daily candles, how are daily candles closing, right? And I have a video exactly talking exactly on bias, looking for specific bias. If we have daily candles closing bullish, as well as four hour candle closing bullish, we can expect price to go up and vice versa and i have a full video that i'll link up at the top here it is basically called session bias and also trend trend in general when you counter trend when you're trying to trade against the trend you're more likely to get caught in a rejection wick so let's take an example here we've been in a downtrend for this time here actually and we can look at here which is an uptrend and here which is a downtrend when you're trying to and you know this downtrend was done as i said from four hour candle closing bearish here breaking the lows here give us the opportunity to understand that bias right and on top of that what we have here is we can see all of the counter trend moves here have ended up being rejection wicks right so we can see how this is a rejection wick so if you try to take buys here not a good idea you get stuck in the rejection wick if again you try to take buys in this area here maybe on lower time frame you were seeing some stuff ends up being a rejection wick and so on and so forth but if we look at the opposite way when you do follow the trend you see that the wicks normally get filled by the candle here's a wick it gets filled by the candle and here's a wick gets filled by the candle and that is very very clear because if we look at yesterday where we had clear bullish pressure here towards the upside you can see how these wicks here ended up getting filled right and you must be questioning okay fine we're in an uptrend but what about this how do i avoid being caught in this so we'll cover that in number two so be sure to stick around for that part uh, but for the most important is going to be to follow the trend i can't believe how many people in the markets don't actually follow the trend it is super super important to follow the trend and that's going to avoid you getting into these rejections right so once you understand that you can use these rejection wicks to your advantage because 
how can you use them you can use them to see where price is going to potentially reject in order to use them as extra confirmation because when i see a candle like this i start to get excited because i know trend is bullish here i'm looking for buys today and i'm not going to get caught in stuff like this i'm not getting caught in stuff like this why because since i'm looking for buys any pullbacks down here is just creating giving me essentially liquidity and if i see that flip up and respect these zones look all of this is just retesting zones here i can expect price to continue up and continue in the direction i intended and that gives me more confidence because it's essentially like a liquidity grab saying that boom price doesn't want to mess with this zone and it wants to continue in the direction that you should have been trading and that is why a lot of people fail is that they try to counter trend the markets and they end up getting caught in these rejection wicks so Let's go to step number two, which is a very, very common problem and probably the most common problem when it comes to rejection wicks. So guys, before we head into step number two, down below in the description is a link to my Discord group and Telegram. Discord I like the best because I've included a resources tab that give you all free resources that I've made for you guys to use. So it's a free group. I don't know why you wouldn't join. It has a lot of good information there. And if you have any questions about the videos, ask in there, share your charts you know ask any questions any confusion and myself or any other person in there will be happy to help so definitely consider joining that and let's get straight back into it not identifying your relevant support and resistance if if we are at a resistance or at a support it's a very high chance will be a rejection right because let's take an example here so you can see all of the examples of when we've had rejections and simply this comes from not understanding where your relevant support and resistance if we were to take a random zone like this where I'm sure many people would be looking for buys around in this zone here. So let's say you wanted to buy price above here because you saw price moving bullish and you probably entered price into a buy probably on this candle close as it closed above the range and you kept stop loss here, right? You can already see where I've drawn a line here. There's an important line here. And what ends up happening is so many people do this. They take a buy or even at the break of the high, they enter here. And what we see is we see price reject, boom. Now they're in drawdown. And it stops them out and they're like well, why did price reject we were bullish trend was bullish price closed above the range and i got caught in this rejection wick this rejection wick here is because you're not marking your relevant support and resistance so to avoid this rejection wick you need to scroll back and see what have we had here in the past well let's draw this nice we've had this whole resistance zone right and this resistance zone if we draw a box like this and we scroll back to where we are on the charts now it makes complete sense why price is rejecting from this zone. So it actually makes it very, very simple. A rejection wick versus a wick fill are happening in rejection zones. And it's as simple as that. But it's a key point that many people miss here in the markets is they don't, they're focusing too much on current price action. But don't understand that when you focus on current price action, you have to also find zones. It would be very, very nice if we could just take a trade and price would continue pushing and pushing and pushing. That would all be very, very nice, but that's not reality. We have pullbacks in the markets. And in order to avoid getting caught in a rejection wick entry, you need to be able to mark your relevant support and resistance. And buying at a resistance is not going to be a good idea and is one of the reasons why you're going to get caught in a rejection wick instead of a wick fill. So I pulled up this example on the chart and we can see we have a clear resistance here. If we're bullish, as we can see, we're heading up. We need to look for buys above here. So if we're going to look for buys, we have to check is our zone clean? And yes, our zone is clean. We don't have any resistance we need to worry about. So anything closing above with a wick, we can expect and anticipate it to be a wick that is filled, right? So let's go see if that plays true in this scenario here. So here we have a nice closure. So first of all, the closure is nice. Wicks that end up rejection wicks is also candle bodies that end up closing a very small candle body with a long rejection towards the upside. If the candle closed something like this from this zone, let me draw it. If we saw a candle that closed, let's say a few candles went up here, and we saw a small candle body with a long wick like this, this is not giving me good indication that price wants to continue up wick fills happen with momentum and in order to see momentum we need to have strong candle closures and these wicks actually start to become targets so you notice that your wick fill uh, understanding wick fills becomes very useful when you're looking at a daily time frame because when you're looking at a daily time frame you can start to analyze and say okay on the daily time frame we are bullish and i expect price to flip and fill that wick 
and that wick actually starts to become targets. So wick fills become targets. So in order, if we're taking this trade here and we expect to close above this range and we see to the left here, there's nothing obstructing us. Guess what happens on the next candle? Boom, we get the wick fill here and eventually get continuation. But as you can see, the target was the wick fill. That's where we saw the first sign of rejection. So wicks do become targets and with momentum and no obstruction, we can expect that wick to be filled and it's very useful when analyzing daily time frame to analyze to see what the daily time frame is doing in order so we can take trades on these lower time frames. We were just talking about how it can be a problem when we run into resistance. This is a clear example here. We have a long wick to the upside, but we have a resistance here, right? That the wick taps. So these wicks do not get filled here. This is more likely to be a rejection wick. When we don't have a resistance, we can see that price ends up filling these wicks after making solid supports. So with that being said, there's only one more step to wrap all of this together in order to help you guys to be able to trade rejection wicks and wick fills in the best way possible and to avoid being caught in a rejection wick. So that's going to bring me on to point number three. So be sure to stick around for that. So the last point and point number three is going to be if you want to avoid being caught in a rejection wick, you have to trade during times of volume because if you're trading the trend, not trading towards support and resistance and the candle is a good shape candle body the last piece to the puzzle is you need volume because if we expect price to go up what do we expect price to do if we expect price to go up we expect price to break highs and respect lows that's what price does take an example here we're breaking highs respecting lows i mean here we didn't respect the lows but we expect it to respect the structural lows which is more important than a candle low we will find inconsistencies of candles breaking the lows but what we expect is these structural lows to be respected right so in knowing that when we see candles start to close bullish and they're leaving wicks we can expect these to be filled if we're going to continue up and if our analysis aligns with price continuing up such an example like this as you can see although slow we do get all of these wicks eventually get filled why because price is heading up here it's virtually impossible for price to head up and not fill these wicks otherwise price would be going down so in order for these wicks to be filled we need volume because without volume in the market you're going to get caught out in a lot of areas like this a lot of areas like this a lot of areas like this a lot of chop like this and this is what's really going to mess up your training so in order to catch volume you don't need a volume indicator you don't need anything special all you need is you need to just understand when have we been seeing volume come into the market and personally for me that is just pre-london london open and a little bit after london open and we can go back test and see if that is true here so the green box represents london open and we can see london open boom big candle towards the upside we have this nice rejection wick and this rejection wick as you remember in the beginning of the video actually becomes confirmation because we're looking for buys here so since we're looking for buys we want to see price back the structure give us a rejection wick which then gives me the confidence to take price towards the upside kind of like a slingshot right springing boom gives me the spring the slingshot towards the upside and we see this wick gets filled here which essentially becomes a target Personally, I probably would have taken trades above this wick instead of trying to get the, the wick fill here. But you get how the idea starts to happen. Why? Because we're in time of volume. If we go to a little bit of a, a dead time between this area here just before New York open, before we get this type of move towards the downside, you can see how it starts to become inconsistent because of lack of volume. We can scroll back and see if that's true. Yep, London open, pre-London. This is a nice example. Pre-London, nothing really really slow and boring london open comes in nice candle telling you upside makes sense all of the wicks start to get filled here and we don't see rejection wicks found resistance here we pulled back created support and then started to continue up when new york started right let's go back and have a little bit of a look again as we can see consolidation getting caught out getting caught out this type of candle although it played out today this is the type of candle you want to be very very careful with Although this played out, I would not trust that type of wick to be filled. That is normally ends up being a rejection wick. And uh, even though it played out, this is a good example. When you see this type of candle, it's not a good candle that indicates upside makes sense. It's actually quite the opposite. So I'd be very, very cautious with those ones. But again, when volume comes in, you can expect price to continue towards the upside and not get caught out in those rejection wicks. Why? 
because you're not trading into resistance, you're following trend, and you're not getting caught out in stuff like this trying to counter trend the move. So important, super simple, but really helps your trading. So to wrap up this video, I'm just going to show you uh, two examples or however many I can find of basically how you're going to use this on the higher time frames and how useful it becomes. So let's, so let's go on the daily time frame here and see how many examples we can find of where we expect wick fills to be potential targets for our trading session and so on, right? So if we take this, this is a big example and they don't happen too often, right? But if we measure something like this, if we're bullish on this day here, okay, and we see this new wick be the target, that target is 54 pips. So on the daily time frame, although it doesn't look like much, when you have this wick and you're bullish because daily candles closing bullish, that 54 pip range actually becomes a target on the daily. And you can anticipate for this candle to make a lower wick and then you can try to find entries to essentially fill that wick. This is a big clear example here at the wick becomes your resistance and that's where you expect price to fill. You don't look at this resistance here at the past. Why? Because the new resistance actually becomes the wick because that is the most recent sign of rejection. So if we're bullish here and we see this nice rejection wick to the downside respecting structure, we start to break the highs, your target can be the wick fill and you can use that to your advantage. So that's where it becomes very, very useful and it's as simple as that. So I hope guys that you've enjoyed this video. I appreciate if you stuck around to the end of the video and uh, let me know if you like this type of video. Let me know if you like the if you like the lighting today, if you like the way I've done it, the, the white charts. Let me know in the comments below. With that being said, take care, trade sharp and until next time, peace.